from nicknames to impressions to being called a robot and compared to Richard Nixon, Jay Leno definitely has his fair share of haters. The rich and famous didn't wait long to start taking aim at Jay Leno once he joined the highly competitive world of late-night TV. Arsenio Hall was particularly keen to let the New Yorker know he wouldn't be in for an easy ride, telling Entertainment Weekly in 1992 he had little respect for his new rival's talents. Hall took particular offense with reports claiming he was bosom buddies with the car enthusiast. Jay Leno and I aren't friends. And you know what? I wasn't anointed, okay? I earned every drop of mine. And I'm gonna treat him like we treated the kid on the high school basketball team who was the coach's son. He was there because he was anointed too. We tried to kick his ass, and that's what I'm gonna do. Kick Jay's ass. Hall contradicted himself shortly after when he told Good Morning America he used to have a friendship with Leno, before adding, "...something's wrong with someone who was always surprised about people being upset with him." The Harlem Night star continued his tirade in the same outlet that was invested in the late night wars. Hall accused his ex-pal Leno of being two-faced and spreading a rumor that was both racist and insulting, while pointing out that himself, David Letterman, and Johnny Carson had worked harmoniously for three years without a war of words. A year before Jimmy Kimmel Live entered the pantheon of American late-night talk shows, its host stirred up a little controversy by throwing shade at one of his soon-to-be rivals. Yes, in a 2002 interview with TV Guide, Kimmel joked, "...I want to do the comedy version of The Tonight Show." The jab apparently cut Leno deep. Although he'd apparently mended his relationship with Leno by the time he spoke to the New York Times months later, Kimmel still couldn't resist getting a few more digs in. I think he turned comedy into factory work, and it comes across. Kimmel discussed how his publicist had been contacted by Leno following his initial put-down, summing up the situation with, "...it's just amazing how insecure he is." To make his feelings crystal clear, the self-effacing funny man added, "...the people who like Leno are largely the stupid group. The people who root for Letterman are the smarter group. The people who like me? Also stupid. I figure I cut into the dummies." But Kimmel saved his most ruthless shade for a 2010 episode of his self-titled show in which he spent the entirety impersonating Leno. Kimmel sported a giant prosthetic chin and unflattering gray wig for the occasion. And although he was later invited to appear on Leno's show to discuss the impression, the pair apparently haven't spoken since then. Leno appeared on Bill Maher's Club Random podcast and apologized to Kimmel for a previous misunderstanding when Leno was considering moving to ABC and interfering with Kimmel's time slot. George Lopez found out how brutal the late-night chat show circuit can be when his TBS vehicle Lopez Tonight was axed in 2011, after airing for only two years. The first ever Mexican-American to be given such a gig was unlikely to have been consoled by Jay Leno, however. In 2007, Lopez tore into his fellow stand-up turn-talk show host in an interview on Orlando radio station WOMX 105.1. The star said on The Scott and Erica Show that he hoped to start a beef with Leno, saying, "...Leno is the biggest two-faced dude in TV." So what had gone down between the pair to cause such a hostile reaction? Well, according to reports, Lopez appeared to be insulted by the fact that Leno had dropped him like a hot potato in the wake of his 2005 surgery. "...When I had my kidney transplant, he called me and was the nice guy on the phone. And then he just puts the knife in your back." The Californian also took aim at his new nemesis' professional capabilities, adding, "...it tells you something about Jay Leno if Conan O'Brien is coming into The Tonight Show when Jay Leno is still young enough to be the host. The dude's like the worst interviewer on TV." While some celebrities were content to stay neutral during the late-night talk show debacle between Conan O'Brien and Jay Leno in the early 2010s, others were more than happy to take sides. And it was pretty clear who multi-talented comic Patton Oswalt was rooting for. In an interview for the podcast Comedy Death Ray, the Emmy Award winner questioned Leno's determination to wrestle back the most coveted slot in NBC's late-night schedules, saying, "...you almost want to take Leno aside and go, why do you want this so badly? Because you don't do anything with it." Yeah. Whereas Conan clearly wants the show because there are things he's dying to do with his writing staff and on the air. 
Oswald, who'd appeared as a guest on Leno's show several times previously, also compared the star's obsession with power to Richard Nixon's. But Oswald was keen to point out that he didn't enjoy roasting the man he once respected. Comedians that don't like Jay Leno now, and I'm one of them, we're not like, oh my god, Jay Leno sucks. It's that we're so hurt and disappointed that one of the best comedians of our generation willfully, like, threw that switch off. I don't like Jay personally, but I do not like how he's behaved with me personally. I've done his show many times in the past. I won't do it again. It's little surprise to discover that the most relentless Jay Leno basher in the showbiz world is Howard Stern. The shock jock appears to treat insulting his fellow talk show host as a sport, describing him as everything from insane to an kisser over the years. Referring to what was supposed to be Leno's final episode of The Tonight Show in 2009, Stern remarked on The Late Show with David Letterman, "'I've never seen anybody who behaves like a robot like this guy. Where's the emotion? Where's the humanity?' On Leno's controversial return, the private part star revealed to CBS's early show that the car enthusiast made him nauseous. Stern said in a chat on Piers Morgan Tonight, "'Jay is insane and Jay is a crook. He steals a tremendous amount of material. He's not fit to scrub David Letterman's feet.'" Stern later appeared on Letterman's show to express frustration with the host patching things up with his main rival. He said, "'I feel like a Vietnam veteran. I feel like I'm still in the jungles fighting your war and you've made up with Vietnam. Jay Leno will forever blow my mind. This is a guy, he took The Tonight Show from you. Mind you, I work for NBC television now and I'm not speaking to Jay Leno.'" The first day that I woke up and was no longer the host of The Tonight Show, I remember the first thought I had is, "'I am not shaving.'" That was my small victory. Few celebrities have more grounds to hate Jay Leno than Conan O'Brien. In 2009, the latter replaced the former as host of The Tonight Show, a development that had been in place for years. But the redhead's patience didn't exactly pay off. Instead of walking away gracefully from NBC, Leno decided to stick around with a new eponymous show that initially aired straight after Tonight. And when the network decided to switch this new struggling show to an earlier time, essentially bumping Tonight to a post-midnight slot, O'Brien was left with no option but to quit. O'Brien first addressed the drama on the show itself, telling audiences that hosting The Tonight Show was the fulfillment of a lifelong dream for him, adding, "...I just want to say to the kids out there watching, you can do anything you want in life. Yeah, unless Jay Leno wants to do it too." <laughs> The star told The Hollywood Reporter in 2012 that Leno hadn't built any bridges. He certainly isn't calling me. It's not like he's going to sneak up on me in traffic. The odds are we will both leave this earth without speaking to each other, which is fine. There's really nothing to say. We both know the deal. He knows, I know. I'd rather just forget." That same year, O'Brien guested on Letterman, where he offered an unflattering impression of his talk show nemesis. He is watching every second. <laughs> Another famous face keen to show they were firmly on Conan O'Brien's side during the ultimate late-night talk show war was Rosie O'Donnell, the comedian who had her own syndicated daytime talk show back in the 1990s, told HBO's Television Critics Association panel via Today. She believed that Jay Leno had played dirty. O'Donnell remarked that she was a big fan of Conan O'Brien and added, the Tonight Show is a franchise that has been 60 years with NBC, and if you're privileged enough to be asked to drive the bus, you should say thank you. When it's time for them to hire a new driver, you should say, thank you for allowing me to drive this and pass the keys to the new guy, and not try to flatten his tires before he even gets going. The funny woman also compared Leno's behavior to another major pop culture scandal, the 1994 incident in which Nancy Kerrigan was attacked by rival ice skater Tanya Harding's husband. She told Us Weekly, "...at least Jeff Galuli took a pipe and admitted he did it. He didn't do it and go, I don't know who hit her. Gee, it was you. You're the one who hit her right in the knee, you know?" It was Shane Stant who carried out the action of hitting Kerrigan, but O'Donnell's point was received. In 2019, Jay Leno told NBC's Today that he wished there was more civility in the current era of late-night television. This call didn't go down particularly well with one of the modern critical favorites, John Oliver, who used his last week Tonight Show as a platform to point out the gray-haired funny man's hypocrisy. 
Oliver reminded viewers that back in the day, the talk show circuit used Monica Lewinsky as a punching bag in the wake of the Bill Clinton sexual relations scandal. And while he acknowledged that many comedians have apologized for their part in the pylon, Oliver said, One who hasn't, and who was among the most relentless, was Jay Leno. The host then recalled some of the latter's offensive quips before adding, "...those jokes have not dated well in any sense of the word, and they're pretty rough." Especially coming from a guy who just this week complained about late-night TV, saying he'd like to see a bit of civility come back. Acknowledging that he, too, had been guilty of shaming Lewinsky during his time on The Daily Show, Oliver finished the piece in his typically emphatic style. If that's what he means by civility, may I offer my new book, Oh, the Places You Can Go F*** Yourself, Jay Leno! Look, look how civil I'm being! David Letterman took a while to make his feelings clear about his late-night talk show rival. It wasn't really until the year 2000, after he'd just undergone heart surgery, that the TV icon even mentioned Jay Leno. And even after poking fun at the man's turn-of-the-century chat with George W. Bush, Letterman largely kept quiet for another nine years. But it's fair to say that he's since made up for lost time. In 2009, Leno revealed that a flattering letter he sent to Letterman after another heart operation was never responded to. In 2010, The Late Show host described his nemesis as Big Jaw, while also serving up a derogatory impression. As the talk show war continued to escalate, Letterman quipped about a Law & Order spinoff, Leno Victims Unit, which would follow two different kinds of hosts, Jay Leno and those who have been victimized by Jay Leno. Letterman's offensive tactics didn't end there, either. During one particular monologue, he admitted, "...I'm telling jokes and making fun of Jay Leno relentlessly, mercilessly, simply for one reason. I'm really enjoying it. It's just fun." And although the pair have since appeared to call a truce, it seems unlikely that they will be sending each other Christmas cards anytime soon. 